Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here bringing you this video from, as usual, my lovely, glorious home office here in Jerusalem on one of the uh, longest uh, nights or uh, longest days of the year. We're getting very close to the summer solstice on the 21st. It's not quite as fun as it was in Ireland uh, where I grew up, where in the late, late nights of June, sometimes you get brightness till 10, 11 o'clock at night incredible uh, sight here in Jerusalem Israel it gets to about 8 30 um, I know this because I keep Shabbat and our Shabbat observance times are uh, linked to uh, the sun so uh, that's about as late as we'll get anyway after Shabbat ended much of which I spent in sleep as many uh, many hard-working uh, Israeli professionals do I did a little check on uh, Google News for those who don't know, I don't talk a ton on this YouTube channel about my day job because I like to keep my uh, private life and work at least somewhat separated. Um, but I did recently begin working with a thought leader in the field of sustainability, sustainable finance, impact investing really is his thing. And it's been firstly really enjoyable actually. Uh, I spent most of my career working in tech comms and to do something bigger i think is the, is the best word than this look at the shiny new technology look at that shiny new technology putting the piece together what are all these technological advances working towards and that's kind of a lot of the creed of 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 impact is moving moving towards a system moving away from our current system which just looks at risk return and uh, anyone familiar with the, the writing and work of Sir Ronald Cohen has probably already guessed who I'm working for uh, because he talks about this all the time. Moving away from risk return to risk return impact or putting impact uh, by the side of risk return, which I absolutely uh, believe in uh, on a personal level as well as a professional. So um, I wasn't even looking actually for uh, ESG news, but I came across this piece by Tanya Hester up on Bloomberg Opinion. It says Middle Eastern edition. Maybe that's why I saw it. But uh, it was anyway, it was syndicated in the Washington Post. And I think she articulates some really, really good thoughts that I wanted to kind of drill a little, talk a little bit uh, further about. So the headline was Millennials and Gen Z are fed up with ESG. By the by, I'm going on Tuesday to a conference in Tel Aviv by Ham Hali Baral um, magazine. And this is actually the theme or one of the meta themes of the conference is uh, bridging the, the divide between older generations and millennial and Gen Z or how to communicate the impact message to them. So very, very fitting that I came across this tonight. Tanya, and I hope I'm pronouncing the J here correctly, says, younger investors are impatient to see real action on climate change and other societal ills, and they want their money to have a stronger impact. Ethically minded, now I'm, I'm not going to just read the whole thing through because frankly there'd be no point to this video if that was all I was doing. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I want to just throw in a few cents. By the way, Tanya is the author of Wallet Activism and Work Optional and host of the podcast Wallet Activism. Tanya says, ethically minded investors are growing more skeptical of ESG, wondering whether it actually furthers environmental or social justice aims. At the same time, demand for ethical investing is only going to increase as progressive millennials and Gen Zers accrue more financial assets, often by inheriting that money from their parents so uh yeah i mean we have this kind of interesting dynamic going on at the moment in which uh you know there's there's a lot of talk of gen z and millennial and millennials being the poorest generation but that kind of disregards the fact that we do you know a lot at least and i, I don't think we can say everyone stands to inherit money from their conservative parents but there's a large there will be a large uh transfer of capital uh, from these older, more conservative generations to Gen Zers. And uh, something that uh, Tanya talks about later in this piece is that we're going to see now two sides of the market be increasingly occupied by these demographics, by Gen Z millennial. We're going to see the buy side of the market. We're going to see uh, investors. And we're also going to see uh, the sell side, in other words, Gen Z millennial, getting involved in uh, putting together financial instruments for their peers to invest in so there's going to be two a confluence of these two interesting dynamics so but the problem that tanya envisions and i think this article may prove very prescient is as follows that the long anticipated sec rules on esg do not satisfy them a prospect that seems increasingly likely 
as financial service industry groups push back on proposed disclosure rules, we should expect to see an ever increasing appetite for alternate investment approaches. So this is really interesting. Um, for those who aren't aware, the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission, has put together uh, proposals for mandating uh, climate-related disclosures for organizations. Now, like any big process, for example, the ISSB consultation process that's currently open, um, there's a, a comment period and a pushback, and, and that leads to, so there's been a lot of back and forth about these changes. And there are, of course, people who um, are not in favor of any move towards transparency coming in industry. Now, the balance is going to be found somewhere in the two. The SEC is pushing for this. It really believes in it. Uh, on a personal level uh, of its CEO as well as an, an organizational level, the market, some players in the market are going to say, hang on, we don't want to uh, have to uh, disclose e our ESG data. So the balance is going to be struck somewhere in the middle. But what Tanya is saying, that balance is going to be struck too far towards the side of business. Now, what I think is interesting, really, and this is just my observation or my thinking on this, I'm going to blow myself up for a second, is that... The process here, you know, the SEC people, some of the criticism of the SEC proposed disclosures has been, well, the SEC is a market regulator. Leave it to do its job of market regulation. And the SEC, by virtue of what it does, is allied or uh, conceived of as being, uh, you know, a, a critical part of the financial community, a.k.a. the establishment in the eyes of a lot of these Gen Zs and millennials. So I don't think it's, it's necessarily uh, about the, uh, that the pushback, that they're going to be annoyed about the pushback I think it's more, and this is a different, slightly different point, that they're going to see the SEC caving to this, caving into this pushback in a reworked version of their proposals as being the ultimate proof that the SEC is in the back pockets of Wall Street and therefore it's not a sufficiently independent actor via V uh, climate change. That's that's where I see the sort of uh, the the pro or the disconnect that Tanya is talking about here, and why these SEC rules that might in themselves not be sort of get people's um, imagination or get them too fired up. That this is why it's actually she, what she's saying is it's going to backfire. I think on uh, millennials and Gen uh, Gen Zers interest in ESG that they're going to see okay, the SEC is finally going to do something about this. Wow, cool. Look, a financial regulator actually getting directly involved in mandating transparency. And then we're going to see a watered down version of that. Those proposals actually get actioned and that's going to just turn people off it all together. That's basically the thrust of this article. Uh, back I go to my corner of the screen. Um, so that, that that's the dynamic that she points to. And I think it's very interesting that Gen Z millennials are going to have more money to invest we're the poorest generation we've been working and barely saving but at some point these two demographics are going to get a little capital boost um, by inheriting money from their parents and simultaneously uh, we know already that they're very interested in sustainability in, in ESG but they're not going to like what they're seeing in terms of what how the ESG world uh, morphs uh, with with these future dynamics. Um, I think that's really about about as far as I wanted to say about it. In fact, we can just end the video here because she talks about the, um, and I think one of them, if I just skip down a little bit more, that they're going to become more activist investors. This is her, these are her five predictions that they're going to be getting involved in philanthropy. So there's this interesting dynamic uh, that Tanya Hester envisions in which she doesn't think, now she's, I obviously sort of have a bias towards impact investing because of the fact that I work in the space. So uh, she, she doesn't mention impact. Actually, there's one link, um, you know, uh, regarding um, traditional methods of giving, philanthropy is being more effective than ESG. So Im impact is not one of the um, alternative investment approaches that she envisions as, as taking, uh, taking hold. Uh, I think that it could be, or I hope that it will be. But she does make some other uh, prognostics, like, for example, that this generation are going to be more impact, more activist investors, more direct indexing options, greater availability of non-market investments. I think that's uh, that's it, the, fi the five trends. So what I do think is interesting in this particular viewpoint is that she envisions... Um, you know, we have, if we look at ESG as this kind of newfangled dynamic that we're having these traditional companies are saying, oh, yeah, we do care about sustainability. We're going to be voluntarily 
for now, uh, compiling our own ESG data now perhaps mandated to do it. And at the same time, uh, what we're actually what chief forecasts we're going to see is that these younger demographics are actually going to completely disconnect are going to completely give up on ESG and this notion that the traditional uh, sort of uh, uh, heavyweights or bu uh, bulwarks I'm I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm fumbling for words here the traditional bastions upholding our system of capitalism as we know it the major market players the SEC the S and P five hundred the Fortune one hundred the big companies in America driving the economy we're going to give up on them we're not going we're going to stop this idea that the change is going to come from within the system and we're going to instead look and i say ironically because we're talking about these new generations moving back towards legacy philanthropy and ignoring this concept that uh, esg can sort of bring a sustainable the necessary sustainability uh, led values to the financial markets again my bias is towards impact investing i think that impact can uh can have the same benefit i don't think we have to work through the esg paradigm i agree with her that the traditional esg paradigm is broken because it doesn't measure reliably uh but i don't think the solution is giving up on this whole idea of uh capitalism working for sustainability goals entirely i think the solution is saying that well this esg framework um that's being proposed if it's going to be if it's going to allow for greenwashing impact washing um and partial disclosure is not going to be far enough i don't think to use to use an old irish expression i don't think the solution is to throw out the baby with the bath water bath water i think that the solution is that we need to find a better way to bring uh to force the market and the market actors to uh to put uh measurable universal impacts as part of the deal um anyway i thought it was a great commentary in any event even if i may disagree with it one of his conclusions and i'll put a link in the description to the bloomberg piece because i always like to link the original and yeah this is a very interesting space i'll also put a link to the con the the Hali Baral, uh conference happening in tel aviv on tuesday just in case they still have tickets and you're watching this video from israel thank you guys for watching more videos are coming soon